This is an Andy's Randomness special report. Reporting now, Andy Pollock. Hello everyone, good afternoon from New York City. This is Andy Pollock reporting. We have major breaking news from Nassau County this afternoon. First reported earlier this morning by the uh, Newsday newspaper out in Long Island. Make sure the mic is here. There we go, that's better. So we got major breaking news this afternoon from Newsday. Uh, we now officially know the sentencing date for former Nassau County Executive Edward P. Mangano. So we're going to go right to the article in just a second. Just very quickly, I want to make sure I'm live. I'm just double-checking it. want to be safe and sorry. I like to test the equipment. Island. Make there sure. we go. That's better. So we are live. Good. Well, let's go into it. Now let's just make sure I pause this, because if I don't pause it, then there'll be buffering issues. So here's the official article from Newsday. So here we go. Now, we were supposed to have a sentencing date sometime this week, but it's been delayed for another three months. So let's see what this is all about. This is written by Newsday's Robert E. Kessler. A federal judge has delayed the sentencing of former Nassau County Executive Edward P. Mangano on corruption charges for three months until March, according to court filings. Mangano's sentencing was scheduled for this Wednesday, December 18th, but a federal judge late last week rescheduled the sentencing for Thursday, March 19th, 2020, at the request of Mangano's defense attorney, Kevin Keating of Garden City, whose office is at 666 Old Country Road. Federal prosecutors had no objection to the delay, according to court papers. Mr. Keating's request for the additional time apparently reflects a concern that the Federal Pro Probation Department could recommend a lengthy prison sentence for his client and, would like, and he would like extra time for him to respond to the recommendation for the court to consider. Mr. Mangano was convicted by March of 2019 of conspiracy to commit federal program bribery, federal... Uh, two charges? Alright, I guess that makes sense. Conspiracy to commit honest service wire fraud and conspiracy to obstruct justice as part of a scheme to help former restauranteur Hadrina Side to get $20 million in direct loan guarantees in the town of Oyster Bay, which also affected former town supervisor Joseph Benditto. In a letter to the judge, Keating asked last week, for the extra time after receiving the Federal Probation Department's pre-sentence report, which usually contains a calculation of what the sentence a deferrent could receive under the federal sentencing guidelines. So again, I'm just reading this from the article, so I'm not going to show you it because if I show you all it, then I'm going to get in trouble with Newsday. So that's why you're still... In case anybody's wondering why you're still seeing me, there's a good explanation. Okay, so, um, this is, let me see what else it says. So, Isaac, right, that's the, um, I'm just trying to check it here. Hmm. Can't really see it. I'm not going to get into more legal stuff, I guess. <laughs> Keating also cited a scheduling conflict. Ed Mangano's attorney said that he had an unrelated three-week trial scheduled for January. Usually, the probation department's recommendation involves a two-stage process. The pre-sentence report calculates the theoretical sentence under the guidelines. That's followed by an addendum. Well, I can't pronounce this word. So, pretty much, uh, the way things are looking, we're going to have to wait until March. All because of a lawyer's decision. So, <laughs> Philadelphia lawyer. That's the right word I want to say this. Uh, thankfully, we have some more good news. We know that Linda, Ed's wife, was also sentenced earlier this year as well in the same trial. Um, she was convicted of two counts also of conspiracy to obstruct justice and two counts of lying to the FBI. 
So, there, she faces two to three years of jail. That's the way things look. So, the way things look, Ed and Linda are possibly going to end up going to jail in 2020. That's the way things are looking. So, we don't have to really wait that long. It's only three more months. Because when you think about it, less than 90 days. I mean, we could wait that long for justice in Nassau County. Now, can we? But, this is very interesting news. I didn't know about this until I downloaded today's edition of Newsday. Which, I will check it for a second here. I just want to see... Uh, on the front cover today. Yeah, I think the impeachment was on the front cover. I wouldn't even be surprised if they put it in tomorrow's paper. Wouldn't be surprised, being honest. Because, again, I get the digital subscription. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about other news. We got other important news I think we need to discuss. Let me see if I can find it. It's actually in today's paper. I'll read that as well. So, if you didn't hear um, the news earlier this week, uh, John Curran, Laura Curran's uh, husband, Laura Curran is the current Nassau County executive. Let me just see if this news they had an article. I just saw in the paper today. Let me just see something. Let me see if I can pull it up, and I'll read that article as well, because that's other important breaking news as well. Well... We know it happened, um, you know the news came yesterday, I might as well just read it, because this is important. Okay, so here is the article, it says, um, John Curran pulls out of contract to represent MTA board citing baseless assertions. So we have other important news from Nassau as well, involving the current county executive and her husband. Here we go. The husband of Nassau County Executive Roar Curran yesterday withdrew his role as a legal advisor for the MTA board after accusations of conflict of interest. John F. Curran wrote in a letter to MTA Chairman Patrick Joseph Foy that although he and his Manhattan law firm Walden Matt Curran LLP could have been very helpful in the intended role and they took that, that step in order to prevent baseless assertions in the press from unnecessarily distracting the board and MTA as it does important work. Curran declined to elaborate on what the baseless assertions were, but said in an interview writing that he and his firm were well qualified for the job. Critics of the firm's appointment said it would have been affected Laura Curran's ability to oppose MTA authority policies and stand up for Nassau and Long Island Railroad commuters. So, that's interesting. So, we do have a letter. I'm going to see if I can pull it up, because I'm having an issue pulling it up right now. Won't let me load it. See, I'm looking up all the other articles, and I can't look them up. Go figure. Unless my internet's acting up, which I hope that's not the case. I always hate when this internet acts up. Thankfully, I got Newsday preloaded. Pre Worst comes to worse. Yeah, I'm able to pull up Google on my phone, but why isn't it coming up on my computer? That is so odd. That is very odd. <laughs> Let me see if I can go on a different website. No, I can't. Okay, so I may have to disconnect for a bit. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, it says we're back on the air. It says we're back. This isn't helping me. I'm trying to pull up the art, the letter from John Curran, but I cannot seem to pull it up right now. I'll just have to go to Plan B and use my cell phone. Cause th th that's where we're ending up at this point, right? Let's see. I can load up the YouTube right now and just see if I'm still alive. That isn't going to help me. 
rides the seven. All right, that's interesting. So a lot of news happening today. A lot of news happening. Oh, excellent. Okay, so I'm still live right now. So I'm still alive. Hi, everyone. I don't know what happened. Alright, so can I pull up the article on my phone? So I'll read it that way. I'll read it that way. Make it easier. Where is it? John Curran. So I wanted to read the letter that he gave to the M... This is so odd. I got the letter. So let me see if I can down... Oh, good. It will let me log in with my YouTube account. So like I'm a YouTuber. I should be able to have entitlement. Here we go. So the letter says, and I quote, um, from Mr. John F. Curran, presentation to the independent board's members of the MTA. But we believe we could have been very helpful. It is our intended role. We take the step in order to prevent baseless assertions in the press from unnecessary distracting the board and the MTA as it does important work. We wish you and the MTA the best as you begin the ex executing on the transformation plan. In addition for clarity, as the request of services were at the earliest days, the firm has not, nor will invoice the MTA. All right, so this is very important information I just got. So I save this article possibly might be a way to save it so i'm trying to see if i can keep the document offline so i got a way to do it on my phone but interesting i can show people the document on monday if i have to very interesting even put it on my tablet let me just see if i can keep it on here Oh, no. I can't save it. That stinks. What's can I, um... Try to do stupid. Well, let me download it this way. Maybe there is a way to save it. Ah! There we go. See? This is why you gotta figure stuff out this way. Okay. There we go. Can I put it on Adobe? I think it will let me put it on Adobe. Can I do it this way? That's why technology is... There we go! See? Got the letter on my phone. You can't really see it that well, but this is the letter that Newsday got. So now I have it. Now, before I wrap everything up, um, there was an editorial in Newsday back... I know this was sometime earlier this week. I'm trying to look for it. Um, classic editions. Can I archive this week? Okay, I might be able to. Might be able to. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't yesterday's. I know that. It wasn't yesterday's. Let's see if I can find it. Might be in Tuesdays. Let me check the editorial. I saw something interesting in Newsday. No, it was Wednesday's paper. It was Wednesday's. Looking at Thursdays by accident, I'm like, wait a minute, where's where's Wednesday's paper? Because they have information on why there was a connection to the county executive's husband. On why he almost took the job with the MTA. I'm trying to think, wasn't there an editorial this week? So I know I read it on Wednesday. Let's take a look. I think I found it. Let me just see here. 
I know if I look hard enough, I could find it. That's not what I'm looking for. Not what I'm looking for. No. No. Maybe if I look up something else, then maybe it'll come up. Found it. Here we go. Right, this was back on Wednesday. Now I remember. So, why was John Curran involved? So, let's see. He came onto the MTA board's radar through Linda Lacewell, a new board member appointed by Governor Andrew Cuomo. So, Cuomo had something to do with this. That's what this Newsday editorial is claiming. In whose administration she served as superintendent of financial services. Did the governor know about Lacewell's plan to hire Mr. Curran? So, no answer from the governor's office. It's still no answer, potentially, now that Mr. Curran ripped through his position. <laughs> Why not any other attorney in New York? Yep. No other connection to the currents. To Laura or John in this case. <laughs> and then David Mack is mentioned. The man who's making a living hell at Northwell right now. See, this is what I mean. Corruption in its finest. I'm sure 1199 would have not been happy about this either. I don't even know if they've reacted. But at least 1199 supported TWU finally getting the contract done with the MTA. Alright, so I think with that, I'm going to wrap this live stream up. So thank you all for watching. I've been on for 20 minutes, but... I was like, wait a minute, we have more important news I had to discuss about um, John Curran that broke yesterday. So I'm like, wait a minute, I should just bring it up. So thank you all for watching. Uh, for those of you expecting WWE TLC predictions, they will still be up at 2 p.m. Eastern. So just have your notifications turn on. Uh, videos on plan upload. So 2 p.m. It's about 1.25 right now. So you should see the video in about 35 minutes. So. Thank you all for watching. This has been uh, Andy Pollock signing off. This has been an Andy's Randomness special report.